Okay, one particular type of series that we're interested in is called a geometric series. Remember, a series is just an addition of terms. A geometric series is when you're adding terms and you are multiplying by the same number to get from one number to the next term. So notice here, you are multiplying by one half every single time to get to the next number. So one times a half is a half. A half times a half is one fourth, etc. That number that you multiply every term by to get to the next number is called your common ratio. And in this case, your common ratio, or r, would be equal to one half. And for a geometric series, it will only get to a sum if that common ratio is less than one. And that makes sense because if the common ratio is bigger than one, then these numbers will get bigger, so there's no possible way it could approach a sum. So first thing we want to be able to do is identify the common ratio. So what number am I multiplying from here to here to get to the next term every single time? Notice that you're multiplying the top number by 2 and the bottom number by 3. So our r is 2 thirds. And these numbers are getting smaller, so it does appear as if we can get to a sum. So we're going to say this converges. Your common ratio on the next one is 2. Right? We're just multiplying by 2 every single time. These numbers are getting bigger, so there's no way that we can add up these terms infinitely to get to a sum. So we're going to say this one diverges. Notice on the next one. Your common ratio is 1, because you're just multiplying by 1 every single time. And if I add up 7 infinitely, there's no way that you're going to get to a sum. Okay, These numbers are not getting smaller. The next one, your common ratio is going to be, or r, is going to be negative 1 half, because notice the signs are alternating. And sometimes if it's hard to figure out if what the common ratio is, you're trying to figure out what number multiply the first number to get to the second number. You can go backwards and just do the division. So negative 5 over 10 is really negative 1 half. So that's another way that you can find that common ratio. And this one, the numbers are getting smaller, so it will converge to some sum. So formally, this is what we can say. A geometric series with the ratio of r diverges if the absolute value of r is greater or equal to 1. So what that means is those numbers are not getting smaller, so you're never going to be able to get to a sum if you add those numbers infinitely. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then we're going to say that the common ratio that the series converges. We are going to get to a sum. And if we converges, the way we're going to find the sum of a geometric series is we are going to use the formula a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term of the series and r is your common ratio. So in these problems here, we want to figure out whether it converges or diverges by finding r. And then if it does converge, we will actually find the sum. So notice the first problem here. If you want to write out the first couple terms, you can. Notice this starts at um, n equals 4. So you're, this is really the same as 1 half to the 4th plus 1 half to the 5th plus dot, dot, dot. Now... You can tell just by looking at this what your common ratio is because it's what you are multiplying by every single time, so it's always the number that's being raised to the nth power. So my r in this value is 1 half, and we know it's going to converge because the absolute value of r is less than 1. So if it converges, what is the sum? The sum is going to be a, which is your first term in this series, which is really 1 half to the fourth, which is 1 over 16, over 1 minus r, which is 1 half. And if I simplify this, this gets me all the way to 1 eighth. So if you add these numbers up infinitely, that sum is exactly 1 eighth. Second one, r is again 1 half, so we know it converges. So the sum in this case, though, notice this starts at n equals 0. So if I plug in 0 for um, n, 1 half to the 0 is 1. So the first term in this series is going to be 1, a over 1 minus r. This is 1 over 1 half, which is really 2. Okay. Notice here, only the 2 on the bottom 
is raised to the nth. The three is not. So if you actually wrote these terms out, we're gonna start at n equals zero, so your first term would be three. Then plug in one for n, your next term would be three halves. Then it would be three over two squared, etc. So notice your r is just the two on the bottom, so it's one half again. So again, it converges. So my sum here would be a, my first term was three, over one minus r. Three divided by half will get you to six for my sum. The second one, notice all of three halves is being raised to the nth power. So your r is three halves. This is a number bigger than one, so these numbers are gonna get bigger, so there's no way we can get to a sum. So we say it diverges and you're done. There is no sum if it diverges. The next one, only the two is being raised to the nth, so r is two. Again, that is bigger than one, so we say it diverges. Sometimes you may wanna use the properties of exponents to break this up a little bit. This is really the same as three to the n times three to the first over five to the n. So notice the only thing being raised to the nth power is that three and the five, so your r is really three over five, which is less than one, so we're gonna say it converges. So we do have a sum. So your first term is, what do I get when I plug in zero for n? I'm gonna get three on the top, five to the zero on the bottom is one. So my first term is just I'm sorry, my first term, which is a, is three. So my sum is gonna be a over one minus r, and this will get you to 15 halves. Okay. The next one, notice these are the numbers that are being raised to the nth, so your r is negative two thirds. Again, absolute value is less than one, so it does converge. So your sum is a, when I plug in one, my first term is negative two thirds over one minus r, and this will get me to negative two fifths. The next one, your r is negative two, so we're gonna say it diverges. The next one, notice you are adding and subtracting, so we're gonna split this up into two separate pieces. So I'm gonna rewrite this like this. There's one sigma, and then the other one can be this. So we can do each sigma separately and then add or subtract it. So in this one, your r is one half, so this one converges. This one, your r is two thirds. Since both of them converge to a sum, I can find the sum of each and subtract them. So here, your a is three halves over one minus r. This one here, your sum is a in this case is two thirds over one minus r. And this one ends up being three, this one ends up being two, so your sum of the whole entire series is actually one. The last two, it's written out in expanded notation instead of the sigma, but we can still do the same thing. To get from here to here, our r is three fourths, again, if you're not sure what that r is going forwards, just divide it. Six divided by eight is three fourths. That's my r. So that is less than one, so it does converge. Your sum is gonna be a, which is eight, over one minus r, which gives me 32. Last one, your r in this problem is negative one half. So again, it will converge. Your sum is going to be a over one minus r, and this is gonna get me to eight thirds.